at the efficient allocation. All right, so now let's move on to the case of dynamic efficiency. So in the static case um, uh, problem, we were thinking about allocating the resources between farmer one and farmer two, or between Joe and Judy. Um, in uh, the dynamic efficiency um, allocation problem, uh, we are thinking about how do we reallocate the resources between the present and the future. Um, if we uh, use a resource now, we're denying the future access to that resource. And the basic idea that we're going to use to um, to think about uh, the allocation of resources over time is the present value criterion. Now, uh, you've probably seen this in other classes, but if not, um, you'll have to look back in the book for a more careful treatment or detailed treatment of this problem. But the present value of a benefit or a cost or whatever it might be is simply equal to the benefit at that time point in time um, divided by 1 plus the interest rate raised to the power of the um, how far out in the future we're getting that benefit. So we take the benefits, suppose that I'm getting $100 at some point in the, in the future, uh, we take $100 in the future, we divided that 1 plus the interest rate, let's say 10% interest rate, and if I'm getting that five years in the future, then that would be to the power five. And that's going to give us the present value of um, the benefits. Uh, at uh, That is, the value of that benefit that I'm going to be achieving at time T, uh, what's the present value, the value of that today? All right, so let's think about how we might do this in terms of uh, uh, allocating a resources. So we've got, again, we've got a resource Q that we're allocating between the present and the future. Um, the resource generate could generate marginal net benefits to society today or marginal net benefits to the future. Um, but because the future happens in the future, we're going to discount that. So we're going to take the, those marginal net benefits, and instead of treating them um, at face value, we're going to discount them. We're going to we're going to use the present value of the marginal net benefit curve, and that is we multiply every point on this, um, uh, or divide every point on on this curve by 1 plus r to the to the t and that gives us a present value of marginal net benefit curves and that uh, geometrically all that amounts to is rotating um, this curve down by a discount um, factor 1 plus r to the t all right so again just as in the in the static case Efficiency is going to be achieved in exactly the same way, but in this case, we're going to be comparing not the marginal benefits against two individuals, but the marginal benefit today versus the present value of the marginal net benefit in the future. Um, when the marginal scarcity rents, um, current and present value are equal, then the um, dynamically efficient um, allocation results. That's really all there is to it. There's some really um, challenging um, uh, discussion in the textbook about how to do this, but that's all that you really need to know, and that is that dynamic efficiency is achieved when the present value of the marginal net benefits at any point in time is equal to the marginal net benefits at today. All right. Um, so, uh, and there's marginal scarcity rent at the optimum um, will occur as if there's not enough resources to satisfy every generation's um, uh, demand for this resource. All right. So, the, what's the basic idea of of um, dynamic efficiency? Um, total net benefits are maximized only if the marginal net benefits are the same to all users, present, future, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All right. Um, and the present value of the marginal net benefits should be equal across time. One of the things that's interesting that falls directly out of this is that this means that prices will tend to increase over time. So we see that the um, the price in the future will tend to go up and up and up and up as we um, go for go up over time. And that's because we need to have the marginal net benefit, the undiscounted um, marginal net benefit, has to be increasing. That's the only way we're going to have a situation where the present value of the marginal net benefit is decreasing. So if you think about oil, there's a natural tendency in the economy for the price of the oil to be increasing over time. All right. Um, I want to just talk another way to think about this um, this problem is in terms of marginal user cost. All right. So we had before um, uh, the marginal net benefit over here and the marginal um, present value of the marginal net benefit over here. Um, so the idea of marginal user cost is that if I use a little bit more today, there is a cost 
um, in terms of less that's available in the future. So suppose that we go from that point to that point. We've er used a little bit more today. We've decreased the amount that's available tomorrow. Um, that marginal increase in marginal net benefit today led to a decrease in net benefits tomorrow and a decrease in the present value of the marginal net benefits. Um, that's the whole idea behind marginal user cost. The more we use today, um, the less, the more it costs us in terms of decreasing um, uh, net benefits, present value of net benefits um, in the future. Um, uh, so uh, again, we can we can know that the the difference between or the height of the marginal net benefit curve is always going to give us uh, the marginal net benefits, and we can interpret the height of the future marginal. Net Met benefit curve as the marginal user cost. Uh, and it's frequently convenient to take this marginal user cost curve and derive it. And so we see that as we increase more today, our marginal user cost is growing. So if we go back here, you'll see that the more we increase, um, the more we increase today, the more our marginal user cost is being pushed up on this curve. So our marginal user cost curve is growing as our consumption today increases. So the marginal user cost is a nice way to think about the consequences of what we do when we consume today. We give up future net benefits um, and we need to take that into account when we're trying to efficiently manage resources over time. Um, if there's uh, an abundance of the resource all right, so that there's um, enough so that we can consume a little bit of the resource uh, today without di diminishing what's available for the future at all, then that first little increment of, of the good comes at zero cost. There's no marginal user cost for the first increment um, and our marginal user cost would start away from, from zero. All right. Um, so the marginal user cost, a very important concept. Um, for any finite resource, there's always a marginal user cost that should be taken into account when we um, think about the allocation of resources. Uh, this is true whether we're th talking about coal or oil um, or even groundwater. Uh, any groundwater that we consume today that's diminishing the um, ability of, uh, of future generations to use that water, um, that's going to have a user cost. So that's all I have on uh, static and dynamic efficiency. I'm now going to just uh, talk a little bit more to make sure that the uh, video doesn't get cut off and hopefully this will all fit onto YouTube. Uh, this should give you good background information for the readings for Module 4.